my name is Judy Ray Wasserman, and I am the founder of post-conceptual art theory, especially the branch known as ungraven image art. Post-conceptual art uses symbols for strokes. Here is my essence self-portrait. But before we get into the radical new essence portraiture, let's first quickly cover a little of the history of portraiture itself. The first portraits were masks or were painted and carved in caves and on rocks, or were statues created by tribal spiritual leaders to depict powerful spirits or gods. As individuals became more powerful, assuming roles of kings, pharaohs, or emperors, they recognized that commissioning portraits of themselves would make them seem more powerful too, just like the gods. Alexander the Great was the first to place his portrait on coins, thus helping spread his fame and unite his empire. You probably recognize many of the powerful leaders depicted in the images here. But we also recognize the less powerful people who were known to artists or commissioned their portraits. We know them even though we're not sure of their names. The most famous painting, that's the most famous painting, not just portrait, is of a woman whose name is still debated in the press. We call her the Mona Lisa. In late modern art, arguably one of the most famous paintings, and certainly portraits, depicts another woman smiling, Andy Warhol's Gold Marilyn. Warhol's double denied, a self-portrait that is in the news that is in the center of an art controversy, is also something that we know but well too. Warhol's screen print portraits become multiples, as he uses design to reveal that Monroe is a glamorous persona, a commodity. Picasso asked, are we to paint what's on the face, what's inside the face, or what's behind it? I work to answer that question and to pay homage to the great portrait artists that inspire my essence work. If your screen is large enough, you can see the small string-like symbols that are my strokes. Here is my basic essence portrait of Oprah Winfrey. My symbol strokes are from humankind's only font that is alphanumeric, phonic, and binary. Binary equals duality. Important concepts of duality are found in all of the world's major religions and spiritual paths. Examples of duality are dark and light, good and evil, or yin and yang. This set of symbols represents the essences of the physical universe which are also known as strings in elementary physics. This, the basic theology of all denominations and branches of Christians and Jews says that these symbols are the letters of the words of the Creator who speak our universe into existence by saying, Let there be light. Van Gogh said, I want to paint men and women with something of the external, which the halo used to symbolize and which we now seek to give by actual radiance and vibrancy of our colorings. Instead of color, I use symbols to, re to reveal the divine. In so I use Song of Songs for the basic essence portrait of Ashton Kutcher and his wife, Demi Moore. This unites them as a pair. The Ten Commandments, also known as Exodus 20, are the basis of the law of the United States and much of the Western world. So I use it for the basic essence portraits of our presidents, including Barack Obama, George Washington, and Abraham Lincoln. All of the texts are chosen as they seem to hold significance about the subjects portrayed. My own personal basic essence portrait uses Psalm 19, which is my favorite song. It's also the one I used for the Andy Warhol portrait. The Warhol portrait was used on Twitter by Interview Magazine, which he happens to have founded. Now we can take his essence portrait of Warhol and create another kind of essence portrait using color. This one is called Double Undenied, and it refers to his own Double Denied. There's a gold Oprah much like the one of Monroe, Oprah is the most recognized media star in our time. 
On the Rembrandt basic portrait, the background is actually taken from one of Rembrandt's own self-portraits. On the Lincoln portrait, you will notice that the it, it's full of symbology. His lapels on his jacket are the colors of the blue and gray uniforms of the North and the South. Lincoln's tie reminds us of the $5 bills he appears on, but also the ongoing financial problems with, that were like a noose around his neck, leading to the war, existing throughout the war, and then following in the Reconstruction. The right side of Lincoln's face is the color of granite, reminding us of his rock-like fortitude, but also pointing to Mount Rushmore. Note the blood-red strokes on his mouth, his ear, and under his right eye. That references that Lincoln spoke of, heard about, saw, and anguished over a very bloody war. Lincoln said about a portrait of his, quote, I presume, sir, in painting your beautiful portrait, that you took your idea from me, of me, from my principles, and not from my person. That speaks of essence portraits, which are not just about the external of the person, but the internal also. You'll see on Obama's essence portrait that he stands before the avatar he used on the Twitter account, which helped him win the election. Notice his blue shadows around him echoes the blue states and the Republicans that continue to cast their shadow over his plans. These are famous people that we recognize, but portraits also help introduce us to people and immortalize people who are not necessarily well known in their own time, but are either close with the artist or have commissioned their portrait. People who commissioned portraits uh, or were known by artists such as Rembrandt, Monet, Van Gogh, or Warhol achieved visual immortality. Of course, it helps to have one's portrait created by an artist whose work blazes a unique new artistic path. That person's not going to be forgotten. Here's a version of my essence portrait again, this time using the gold and purple colors that are, are significant for post-conceptual engraving in the art theory. And here's my logo, which is also my signature. It's a kind of self-portrait itself because it uses the letters of my Hebrew name for the features. You can match up the letters to the eyes, the nose, the ear, and the mouth. I hope this video inspires you to see yourself and others in a new way. In addition, it introduced the radically new essence portraiture of post-conceptual art. To discover more about post-conceptual art and essence portraiture, please go to ungravenimage.com. To see more of the essence portraiture, click on the essence portraits tabs in the menu. Thank you for watching. My name is Judy Ray Wasserman.